Test, Test one, two. <coughs> Sing it. Well, that's relatively unceremonious. No flashy intro or anything beyond that. No plot synopsis unless you let the title screen on too long. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Comic Zone. Something I should note off the bat. I am playing this with what is basically a Sega Saturn controller, so I have access to the X, Y, and Z buttons. That might not seem so important at first, but that drastically changes how easy this game is to play. New York City. Present day. Look at me, Sketch. I'm just a drawing, but I'll be free soon enough, as soon as you're dead. I cannot kill you here, but I know the perfect place to do it. Have a nice trip! Wow, literally just throwing us into everything, aren't you? NWE Command Center, Newer York City. Oh, here you are. What the sh You must be the chosen one. Who? Hey, do I know you? I've been expecting you. I'm General Alyssa Cyan. Your name? Sketch Turner. Wait a minute. Sketch? Well, Sketch, this mission is critical. I'm in my own comic book! No! I beg your pardon? Alyssa, I'm not your superhero. Eh, just relax. Let's not waste any time. You have a job to do. A job? What are you talking about? That's all for now. I'll be in touch. This is crazy! You may need some of these items. Good luck! Yeah, right. And these items are now mapped to the X, Y, and Z buttons as mapped in the top right in order. If you're playing on the three-button Sega Genesis controller, you instead have to mash, I think it's the C button, to navigate between each of the items one at a time, making it for a very clunky control scheme. Otherwise, Comic Zone is a weird blend of 2D beat-em-up and fighting game. You attack with the A button, and you can press and hold and do minor button combinations to do slightly different techniques, like an uppercut that really does some damage, a duck punch. You jump with the B button compared to up, though, thankfully, so it's not exactly a fighter. But using a six-button Genesis controller versus a three-button really dictates how much more fun you're going to be having with this game. Because on a three-button, honestly, this is kind of miserable. Now up in the top right is our health bar, that green bar, and you might be noticing it goes down pretty quickly. Enemies in this game hurt a lot, partially because there's just not too many of them in the long run. With that said, you might also notice enemies have a pretty good habit of blocking. If you attack an enemy while blocking, you can still take damage. So watch out for that. You can also waste health by pu uh, punching and attacking unnecessary things like certain barrels or boxes. It's very easy to lose health in this game, but the really cool thing about this game is you saw every mini stage is in its own right a different comic panel you can move between and every level has multiple paths I'm on the right path now because I wanted to be the more palatable one and along here we get roadkill this is our pet mouse roadkill is a deceptively useful item so screw the knife I don't need it roadkill can not only find hidden items for you he can scare away certain enemies period and hit certain levers for you that can open new pathways in the level design there's not many puzzles in this game this is one of those games that's difficulty is more reliant on how much it just wants you to die, <laughs> rather than any actual, like, hard thinking. The enemies will try to kick your ass, the stages will try to kill you, there's not much in the way of actual puzzles in this game. Oh, hi! These flying enemies are probably one of the most annoying ones when it comes to the few platforming sections in the game, because they will actively try to knock you down into pits. With that said, a couple of jump kicks or upper cups should take care of them, no problem. This is Strigil. Strigil is potentially my least favorite enemy in the game because he blocks a bit more often than the red enemy I've noticed over the time, but also because he can teleport in certain areas that just makes hitting him really annoying. Plus, he also has this really long wind-up attack where he kind of just goes along the most of the floor he's near, and that's really annoying to get around. Now, you need to make sure you don't 
push that box all the way against the wall. Not because it screws you out of not taking damage there, because if you jump down that hole, you just fall into some exploding barrels and take some damage. But instead, because it's hard to get blocks off of walls. It's not impossible. You just need to jump into their far left or right corner, depending on what wall they're against. But at the end of the day, it is hard to do. Watch out for bottomless pits, by the way, because they are instant kill. Oh, yeah. What the f was that? Every page is in of itself a separate stage, sort of. Technically speaking, the game only has three levels that are just broken up into two acts. Every page acts as a checkpoint of sorts. If you die at, the be at any point in a page, you're sent back to the start of it. Sort of. Let's see what's behind this door. Yeah, I can't wait. Now, don't talk about your foot smell sketch. The reason I say sort of, in this game to start, you only have one life. If I die on the first page or this page, I'm back to the title screen. You get an extra life for every single page you've beaten. Meaning, it's very easy to get a game over early in the game, a bit harder later on, but still very possible. Now, you want to be very quick about taking out these cocoons with uppercuts here, because they will spawn minor bug enemies on the floor eventually. And you just don't want to deal with them because they make dealing with this particular strigil that much more annoying. With that said, uh, you can use the fans in this room to a good effect because they do a lot of damage to the strigils. This is a case where you need to use roadkill in order to actively hit a certain switch. Though you can also use the dynamite I have. As for the items you can pick up in the various stages, there's roadkill himself, who I've gone over what he can do. There's an iced tea, which was that weird little bottle I had that looks more like a medicine bottle. That replenishes about, I think, half your health. There's a fist, which is called the superhero item, which turns Sketchum to a superhero and does basically an invincible screw you attack to anything on screen. There's the knife, which is the knife sub-weapon from Castlevania, but one use, throw it forward for some good health, for some good damage. Here's the grenade, which is a long-range throwing explosive attack that does some good damage. There's the dynamite, which does a lot of damage, but can't be thrown as far. And then there's the surprise item, uh, which is a question mark you can find on certain floors. That can turn into any of the items in the game when you pick it up, or it can just be an explosive for no reason and almost kill you. This game is not very kind to its players, I think is the best way to put it, because honestly, every enemy practically is a boss fight in its own regard, because of how much health they can take, or how much punishment they'll try to deal out on you. The best advice I can give if you're using a six-button controller is try to grab your enemies as often as you can, because if you grab them, which you do by, I think, holding towards an enemy and then pressing A, you can also throw them. And throwing them into walls does good damage in its own right, but throwing them into obstacles can also not only help you get rid of any obstacles like boxes you might need to eventually, but also just do good damage to the opponent. There's a lot in this game that is there to help you, but the game is still so absurdly rude it's almost ridiculous. Also, I'm by and large not going to be reading much of the dialogue in the game because they do some interesting stuff where all the cutscenes happen as you play, but by and large... It also means that you're always distracted. Also, there's some minor graphical problems. I'll be frank, I'm not sure if that's because of the emulator I'm playing it on, or if it's because the game is so admittedly intensive on the Genesis that there was always some weird graphical hiccups. Because this is definitely one of the most impressive games on the Genesis from a graphical and sound perspective in my eyes. Hell, the levels alone are some of the most impressive things. Not many games really do this comic book style effect in this very regard. I'm almost kind of surprised they haven't. Also, be careful of these mutants. I'm killing them pretty quickly because there's a pretty good lock you can get them into by holding onto them, doing a kick, and then doing a 1-2-3 combo, followed by another grab kick. Uh, if they stay on screen for too long, they will mutate into the red enemies we've seen before. And welcome to our first proper boss, the Mutant Queen. If you use the dynamite I had on her, she'll get knocked up, and she'll then start blowing fireballs at this barrel, which you can then bring into her to kill her very quickly. By and large, every boss fight proper has a quick kill of sorts to help you with killing them, or you can go the long and drawn out route of actually punching them or using whatever sub weapons you have on them. You fired. Well done, Turner. Well done, Turner. Man, what a trip. And that's the end of our actual first stage, technically first episode, and we're 30% of the way to our superhero meter. I should note that percentage is always progresses at a fixed rate. Every stage you clear, barring one example, you always gain 
now for episode two in the Himalayas. What's this? The Rockies? Ah, here you are. Man, it's cold. We suspect more to set up a secret training ground in this area. Go in and see what's up. Oh, sure. Tibet City. Okay, and here we have one of my least favorite enemy types in the game. I say that, but there's not too many. This is Styx the Monk. Styx, I feel, is the most block-heavy opponent in the game. With that said, there is a technique I don't use much through the LP that can help you with him. In that if you press and hold the A button, Sketch will turn towards the background and start ripping a chunk of paper out of the background. To... He'll then throw a paper airplane at the enemy, which does a shitload of damage. The only problem is that also takes a substantial amount of health to be able to throw. Basically, it's, uh... The closest analog I can think of is using the special moves in the Main Streets of Rage games, where you lose health for using them on the enemy. So only do that in the most dire of circumstances. This stage also has probably some of the most prominent secrets. Also, uh, don't punch any of the boxes that have an exclamation mark on them because they explode and do a metric shitload of damage to you. Actually, right there, uh, I actually misspoke earlier when I think about it. To move a block of any kind that is against a wall, you don't jump into its opposite corner, you hold in that direction. I think the implication is your scooting legs is moving it the opposite way. It's awkward. Now, the obvious solution, if you want to keep your health as high as you can, is to move on the lower route. But I actively want to get rid of all three of these blocks. By the way, cover the hole the enemies are spawning out of with the first blocks to prevent them from spawning any further. Uh, there are certain cases in this game where panels can only be preceded either by killing all the enemies or solving a minor puzzle of sorts. And uh, just uppercut this over and over again, because otherwise I think if you get too close to this iron spike, you take damage. This game isn't easy. <laughs> As I've stated, this is not a fun game to do a first playthrough of because it will just endlessly kick your ass. What I just did there is actually a little bit hard to do. Uh, there's a dodge roll of sorts where you, I think, hold down and then do like a quarter circle forward, almost like a charge move from Street Fighter. But it's not the most responsive or useful for avoiding attacks due to how long you have to hold it. Now, what I just did there, obviously, I can just do a low kick to kill that enemy really quickly. But if you press a space yourself correctly, it's also the only way you can destroy explosive barrels and boxes without getting hit yourself. Destroy that wall here for one of the few outward secrets in the game. That allows me to get an extra health item, which I'm never going to say no to. Make sure you have roadkill for this next section, by the way, because it's going to make it the safest for you. Human, this tournament is for Kung Fu graduates. Oh, Kung Fun graduates, sorry. Kung Fun? The Temple Master, our trainer. Where is this temple? You... Must be joking! Strigils! That's the superhero item. Your tricks are useless in here. And sort of they are. I think they actually might spawn extra enemies in certain cases if you use certain items. There are a surprising amount of different ways to do different rooms in this game, depending on the items you get due to the various pathways. But that said, uh... Every enemy, we've almost seen every enemy fighting in the game already. There's only really, not counting the main boss fights, two we haven't seen yet. Gravis, make it quick. This is Gravis, by the way. He's kind of rude. Roadkill can be used to attack enemies, but I only really use them in certain cases, by the way. Uh, namely, the next enemy we're going to be fighting. Now, something I do recommend looking up at one point is the manual for this game. It has a story summary that kind of leads into the actual game's plot proper. But I'm not going to be reading it because it's it's a comic book. They actually made the comic book Sketch Turner himself was writing that we got sucked into the story prologue. And it's really cool. There's some legitimately good artwork in there. Uh, but the artwork itself... Is, not the artwork. The manual itself is probably the best way to learn how to play this game on 3-button versus 6-button controllers. Because they give you all the different techniques... And even the input combos for basically every uh, attack in the game. It's one of the more informative manuals I've seen from this generation. Ah, Mongoria, do it, baby. This is Mongoria. She's basically Cammy from Street Fighter if she was evil. She's gone now. Mongoria has one of the few notable weaknesses in that if you use roadkill on her, she'll just jump off the page and instant kill herself. And with that, we now have access to the next area, finally with one of the most dickishly pressed, placed strigils in the game. 
It's possible to get past him with good timing, or you can just send out Roadkill to hope he finds the secret item, because sometimes the hit detection in this game is a little bit wonky. Because hidden right here is a grenade! They usually do give you the item you need. You sometimes just need to look for it in a way that most games wouldn't let you, really. Whoa, that's deep, bro. This is potentially the hardest part of the stage right here, honestly, because between the flying monsters' movement being kind of random, you need to kind of hope they move into each other so that they don't go into you. Sticks will easily kill himself here, but then you need to just wait for these enemies to walk into you, and it can take a while. Comic Zone, at the end of the day, the difficulty is more so due to some awkwardness in the controls and how they spam enemies in you in certain instances, rather than actual difficulty at times, I feel. And because of that, this game doesn't always feel the best to play, but it's one I really recommend in a lot of regards, because of how unique it is. With that, the first half of Episode 1 is done, but with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in Part 2, the last 55% of the game, according to the meter at least. See you guys then.